What's up guys, it's Joe the Pro here, back at it again with another video. Before this video starts today guys, I need you guys to please drop a like, subscribe, hit the post notification bell. So today what we will be doing is reconstructing a respot cell that I recently pulled out of a machine. We're gonna keep it pretty basic here. There's not really that much wrong with this one, except that, so like right now it's in the clamped position, and then say when the table comes back down and the pins in there doesn't really release that well and it's it's kind of like all jammed up and it really just needs to be gone through and cleaned and fixed up so we will demonstrate how to do that in this video and uh, we will start by removing these cotter pins that are located at the ends of each of the tracks Okay, so now that I have all the cotter pins on all the tracks removed, there are four there are four of these tracks total on the respot cell, and there's a cotter pin that goes on the end of each one. On this end of the track, there's just like a little stopper that was made as the track was being made. So now, depending on how busted up the respot cell is, you should be able to pull that right off like that. What I usually like to do, I start by just dismantling this configuration here. These are pretty dirty. All right, so now you can also take your uh, your gripper pads off. You can put those back on in the end. So just take a good look at everything. As you can see, this is bent to crap right here. They're supposed to be straight up like how this one is. So I'll start by showing you how I straighten them. This may not be how the book tells you how to do it, but this this is the way I've always done it and it's worked every single time. Uh, you don't wanna clamp down on these rollers that hard when you put it in the vise, because what happens is you can actually clamp it down so hard that it will start to bend this part of the uh, bracket here and as you can see it looks like some the last person who did this was close to doing that it's not totally straight but it's not to the point where it's gonna cause a problem so I'll just run it so you want to do it nice and light on there and then you just like what I do I usually use the vise to level it out so they're pretty easy to bend, as you can see. I'm gonna clamp it down just a little bit harder. So what you're looking for is right about like that. You want, I mean, if you really wanna get technical, you can put a level on there, but I'm gonna call that good. And nobody's saying that you can't make a uh, small modification to it if it doesn't work once you get it on there. So as you can see, I got this one squared off pretty good. Take a good look at it in the air. So now to test that, um, well actually we have to wait to do that after we check the track. So you wanna check this other one too. Uh, this one can go a little bit. So just clamp it just a little bit. Sometimes you might need to do a little higher up. That should be good right there. I think I like that. All right, so we have our track, we have our bracket straightened now. And um, now we will look at our triangles. So what you're looking for with these, you wanna check these rollers, make sure they're nice and free. If they're, uh, if they're starting to fall apart, um, they do sell, well, I don't know if they sell them anymore, but I have seen a repair kit for these. It's like a, it's like a screw on bearing because uh, the original ones here, as you can see, are riveted, but you actually screw a new bearing on. But I mean, I have so many of them laying around here. Like I have all these ones in this box that I've fixed and cleaned. So, but these ones look pretty good. Um, can check these ones too. So these should be fine. 
Uh, the second thing you're looking for is to see if there's any bends in the passways here. So the way that you can test that is by simply taking your bracket and, and putting the roller in the uh, opening here, like how it normally would run. And you want to see if there's any resistance in here. And I and what I'm seeing right now is I cannot hold this straight on there without it binding up a little. So we're going to come back to that side, but I'm going to check all these ones right here. See, that's how it should be. This one goes nice and free the whole way. There's no binding and it's nice and straight. So we're gonna come back to this one over here. We can check and see what this one looks like. So as you can see, I'm holding it nice and straight. The rollers are kind of parallel to each other. And uh, same thing with the other side. This one's nice and free, so that's good. So this one's all good to go. It just needs to be cleaned really good. Um, this one, on the other hand, we have to do some bending. So the book probably doesn't say to reuse these, but as you know, these machines are going on, most of them are six years old now. So you really can't buy these parts anymore. And as you can see, looking at it, this thing is pretty bent up right here. So what I've done in the past, I'll put this in the vise, watching that I don't really clamp on the bearings. And I, I like to take a look at these, uh, whatever you call them, the triangle pieces. And as you can see, there is a pretty good bend and division between this opening here. So what I do, I'll take a flathead screwdriver, kind of just pry it in between there. You don't need to go too far, but just try to even it up a little. So you can see I went a little far on that one. So you can try it there. Um, usually these things are pretty fixable. So just like that, that one's pretty good. So just a note, quick note, I have seen them where like if uh, if the table comes down and it like lands on a pin the wrong way, I have seen these little overhangs here get all bent up. You can try to straighten them out. Usually you get lucky and you can, but sometimes these get squished together right here, causing the roller to bind up like right around here. And what I can, what I do, I, uh, I kind of do the same thing. I take like a flathead screwdriver and you'll get, you'll figure it out, but you kind of, you kind of just got to pry it apart. And uh, it's really not that hard, but you'll know when you get it because the roller should go through there nice and free, like how it is right now. We will now go back to the uh, main structure of the respot cell. Now you just want to kind of look at the operation of, uh, this piece right here and this mechanism here, that's what that's what the uh, that's what it holds on to there. As you can see, I can't like forcibly oh I guess I can. I wasn't expecting that. So uh, I guess we do have to take a look at that. That's not good. So as you can see, as I just found out I no, oh, it's not doing it now. Oh, there it goes. All right, so we'll take a look at that. Let's do the tracks first. So uh, we'll make a note of that and we'll come back to that. So uh, these tracks are pretty easy to straighten. What you really need is this, uh, this track straightening tool. That's what I call it. And uh, basically what you do with it, pretty straightforward. You slide it in the track, make sure it's nice and free when it goes in there. This one is a little tight. As you can see, there is a little gap right here. So what I do, actually, here, let's fix this first. So as you can see, right near the opening here, it's a little, it's a little clamped down. So what I can do, I just take this right here, 
just open it up a little bit. And if you go too far, it's no worries. You could just hammer it back in a little bit once you have the tool in there. So as you can see, most of the way it's pretty good. But once we get to about here, it, uh, it gets all messed up. And just from looking at it, I'm seeing a slight bend going right about here. So what we're gonna do about that is, uh, I'm gonna try to straighten it out here. It may or may not work, we'll just have to see. Worst comes to worst, we will, uh, it can loosen up these screws here, remove the track, and uh, just replace it. I have a whole box of them. Um, if you do end up having to take these tracks off or if you just wanna clean them up, there's a uh, 3 8 nut on the back of these screws. I recommend loosening that nut first because t nine times out of 10, you're gonna strip these screws out and you're gonna be screwed. And um, there's not really a right and wrong way to do this. It's pretty straightforward. Um, what I can do, get my nice handy dandy hammer here give it a few whacks sometimes they're a pain in the ass but uh, like I said nine times out of ten they straighten out so that already looks a little better we're gonna go we're gonna give it a few more hits so so now as you can see this tool here goes right through every time. So it's pretty easy, honestly. And now, now that it's straight that way, you wanna make sure that there's no um, excessive gaps between the tool and the track. Because what'll happen is if it's big enough, the rollers can actually fall out of the track and that'll mess, that'll mess everything up. So what you want to do is just make sure that these are closed up pretty good. You know, they don't have to be perfect. But you just want to make sure it's always free. I'm a perfectionist, so I think I spend a little too much time on them sometimes, to be honest with you. But I think that side looks really good. Probably the best one I've ever done. <laughs> so we'll give this one a little tap right here. And if you like see like a down spot, like right around here, you can take a small flathead screwdriver like this and slide it in there. Give it a few taps. That'll open it up a little. Like see how it's nice and open up now. So this track is now straight, as you can see, because the tool slides right through every time. And you can check both sides. So as you see, that track is now good. So I'll take my white marker and mark it, it's just so I remember that I did it. And uh, now I'll check all the other tracks, kind of do the same thing, and we'll get back to you when I'm done. This tool slides in and out of every single one, nice and freely. Um, there should not be any binding when you slide this tool in. If there is, you have more work to do. But as you see, we are all good here. So now I wanna come back to this problem we were having right here. So what the problem actually is, is that I should not be able to put pressure on this and have it open back up. And believe it or not, it's a uh, pretty easy fix. And by the way, I did find the proper name for this. It's called the Star Latch Assembly. So sorry about whatever gobbledygook I said earlier in the video. Um, so basically all you gotta do is what flips this little kind of like the star gear right here is uh, this little this little tab right here, and and this is part of the star latch assembly. This is the star latch itself. This is, I guess, the assembly. <laughs> so um, 
What you wanna do if you have this problem, you can actually do this if the respot cell is still on the machine. I've done it many times. What, all you gotta do is bend this little tab out just a little bit. You don't gotta go crazy. Um, you just want it out just a little bit to the point where it catches and it doesn't like, it doesn't stick. So you want it to kind of be like that. You should be able to put, well, oh, see that didn't work. Maybe, but sometimes th these do get cracked. Maybe that's our problem. Yeah, I shouldn't, but you should not be able to uh, open it like that, like how I was able to before. Let's see, Let's see now I, now it's actually pretty good, but I don't like how. It, uh, see, huh? It's strange. Oh yep. Is that a crack? Let's take a look here. Yep, that's exactly what it is. So, the reason why that did not work is because I actually have a little crack in this one. I don't know if you guys can see it, but right around there, there's a crack in it. So, this one is gonna have to be changed. What you'll need to change this is a Allen, an Allen wrench. So, it's a, I don't know what size it is. It's just a small Allen wrench. There's two screws that hold this assembly on. It's pretty straightforward. Take out the screws. And um, you're gonna need to replace this, so make sure you have a replacement to put on. So there's another screw right here on the bottom of it. Sometimes it can also be that you're just missing a screw. Sometimes these screws fall out on you. It kind of makes you feel stupid, but it's all right. We all have our moments. Just find another screw, put it in there. Make sure you don't cross thread it or anything stupid. So now that I got that screw out, this assembly will fall right out, just like that. So the crack I was talking about is right here. I don't know if you can see it. There's a small crack right there that's making it not as strong. So what we're gonna do is go to my handy dandy box of respot cell equipment. And of course I have a thousand of these things because I save every single one I get. So uh, I'm gonna find one that we can put in there. That one looks pretty good. I don't see any cracks in it. We'll clean it up real quick. You can uh, put it back on the respot cell here. So it should just slide right on. I'm not saying it definitely will, but it should. So you can get the screws started on each side. And also what you're looking for, you want these sides right here. You want these sides to sit parallel with the edge of the frame of the respot cell. Because if they're rounded, that means that this piece is not sitting flat and that's just gonna create more problems. So you want this to be flat up against the frame of the respot cell. That's gonna be really important when it comes to flipping that Starlatch gear. So you can try to sneak this one in right at the bottom here. So sometimes it's a pain in the ass, but this one looks like it's gonna go right in. So that's nice. And when you're tightening things on these respot cells, you don't have to really uh, crank on it. Just snug them up. Nothing special. Be a nice person to it, and it'll be nice to you. So, those screws are nice and snugged up now. And I think I'm gonna have to bend this one actually. It looks like it's a little bent but maybe not. Yeah, this one's, I think this one's pretty good, actually. Maybe we'll bend it just a little bit, just prevent anything from happening. So, um, 
just gonna give it a little bend. We're not gonna do anything crazy because we don't want to end up breaking it. So that's good right there. Yeah, that's good right there. That ain't going anywhere. All right, perfect. So now that that's taken care of, and we have a good working star latch, we're gonna give the whole respat cell assembly a basic cleaning, because you guys know how I am about that. So what you can do if you had to grease her like this, just give it a good spray. Let the let it soak on the on these nasty tracks for a little while. I always like having a toothbrush in my workshops. It's good for cleaning. All right, guys. So I have everything cleaned up now, for the most part. Um, I wasn't able to get to these triangles and stuff yet. I am going to give them just a little cleaning, but um. I got all the tracks done and everything important. So what I'll do, put the brackets in there, see how that runs nice and free. Check it both ways. So I'll repeat this process with the other one. So that one is sticking a little, I can feel it. So what we're gonna try to do here is, um, looks like it was too far inward. Let's see, I didn't even really have to bend it that much, but now it, now it slides in there nice and freely. So we'll call that good. Um, there's not much to these triangles, but you can check them if you want. All right, so those are good. So now you can put these, uh, triangles on the brackets like just like this and you can let them slide down it should be nice and free now that you went through and fixed them so now we will put this on the respot cell assembly just like this try to get all the rollers started in the track one fell out on me. There we go. And just like that, it's nice and free, but let's get some cotter pins in there and test it out. All right, guys, so I was just about to put a cotter pin in, but we have an interruption. We gotta set up a 10 pin on lane eight. So. Should be good. Let's actually check this respot cell right here. Check, make sure the pads are on there all the way. That should be good. Now we can get back to what we were doing. So I'm going to put these cotter pins in, like so. And always new, always use new cotter pins. Um, there's no sense in putting old stuff on something you just spent time rebuilding. All right guys, so as you can see now, we have the respot cell completely assembled and it rides nice and freely. But one quick thing, since we use that degreaser on most of the parts, you're gonna wanna do a quick shot of oil. I know I sound crazy saying this, but you wanna do a little dab of oil on all the tracks and the rollers. You don't gotta be crazy, but you do want just a tad bit of lubrication in these things. You don't need a bunch of stuff. 
but that should be good. All right. Oh, let's get the uh, star latch piece right here. There we go. All right. Let's make sure everything's still free. Should ride nicely like that. And what I usually like to do, I'll throw a set of pads on it real quick. These are the ones that were on there in the first place, so just put these ones back on. So, uh, I do, like, if I'm feeling really crazy, I'll take a, uh, old tube from the tape, from a table, and actually clamp this on to the tube somehow, and put the pin in it like that. But usually what I do, I just hold the respot saw like this, and check it like that. <laughs> Now I'll go at all different parts of the reef butt cell, make sure it picks it up, doesn't drop it. There's your good reef butt cell. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, peace, and do it like a pro. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for tuning in.